after DJ Dance Month. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday night, 6 p.m. And that means one thing and one thing only. Trending essay is on your screen and we have a great show in store for you this evening. Now this week we have, of course, we're exploring toxic relationships, how to identify them, whether we are in them and more specifically, right, how to heal from them. Singer and songwriter Cece is here to give us her first-hand account of her own healing journey after leaving a toxic relationship. Cece, welcome to Trending SA. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for being for here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and looking yeah, so gorgeous. Yeah, cool. oh, I saw so more. I was just <laughs> like, and by the way, why can't our DJ dance? Like, I don't know. Because because it's not important. What is important <laughs> is just how amazing she is. Did it just you know, I looked at her and I'm like, wow. It's called wow. a deflection, my play. It's huh? called a deflection. No, you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with that one. <laughs> I've been saying all week, I've been vindicated, South Africa. <laughs> so, Cece, as I said, thank you so much. Let's get into it, right? Yeah. Mm. You have been in a toxic relationship yeah. and you were very public about your pain. Yeah. Uh, and looking back now and what you know now, yeah. what have you taken away from that whole experience? That it's so important for us to teach our kids self-love and that we don't need other people to mm. validate who we are. Um, because I think, you know, I kind of needed that validation, but instead of it being a validation, it was more, you know, them playing on my insecurities yes. and knowing how to manipulate that power. Um, so, yeah, teach your kids to love themselves. That's the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah. On that subject of love, mm. That's one of the things that you lose when you're in a toxic relationship. Yes. And it is, it, you lose your self-worth, yeah. your sense of self-love, yeah. your sense of self. Yeah. When you finally exit that situation, mm. how do you navigate to finding yourself and finding your self-love and rebuilding yourself from scratch? Look, I think it's understanding that it's not going to happen in one day. Mm -hmm. Understanding that it is a process because mm -hmm. obviously this is something that happened over time. Losing mm -hmm. yourself, losing your, not, not loving yourself the way that you should. That was a process. It's like mm -hmm. pregnancy, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's all gradual. <laughs> yeah, it's all gradual. Yeah. It's all gradual, and so you need to understand mm -hmm. that your healing process and path is a journey, and it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's interesting you mentioning journey, Cece, because. Yeah through everything you've been through, you've been left scarred. Yeah. A lot of your experiences have left you feeling somewhat things that you're trying to repair. Yeah. Let's talk about that journey of mm -hmm. putting it all back together again. I mean, how do you navigate that? How do you say, I will not go back to this again. I will, I will have to unlearn this. Yeah. Just take us through that, that process. I mean, I think every warrior has a scar. I mean, if you've gone into war, you're going to have a couple of scars. But I mean, I think for me, it was really just a process of finding myself again and understanding my self-worth and what I deserve. And I think it helps to call him Denini where your parents love you and appreciate mm. you. So I knew what love is and what love isn't mm. and what it's supposed to look like. So um, I think that's why I was able to walk away from that relationship, you know, mm. um, and which is a difficulty that a lot of women face. But uh, it's like I said, you take it one step at a time. And there's days where you think, ha, okay, I'm over it, I'm happy. Mm. And then it just hits you like a wave mm. and you go back into the dark space. So that's why I'm saying it's a process. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and Mo, Mo has alluded to those physical scars and at some point you wondered if you'd be able to have yeah. a child and yeah. be able to conceive. Yeah. And uh, your beautiful baby, Diallo, <laughs> is proof that, Yay. yes, indeed, look at that. Just um, the you know. <laughs> Sammy. And so <laughs> on this motherhood journey and your own healing journey, yeah. Cece, I'm curious to find out if there's anything specific that you are so certain you don't want to pass on to uh, pass on to your baby because you said for instance we definitely need to teach our children self-love and self-worth I think the feelings of inadequacy and being insecure with who you are I don't want to pass that on to my son I think I want them to be confident in who they are and it's so weird that when I found out that I had a son I was like oh my god thank you Mm. You know, which is crazy because, you know, I look at the kind of society that women are living in and it's not a safe space. Yes. And it's crazy that the first thing that came into my mind when I found out it's a boy, I was like, Whew, OK, it's not as you know what I mean? I, I think one of the biggest themes in this conversation is the whole idea of moving on. Yeah. And I think a big part of that as well is the idea of closure. Yeah. I mean, paint a picture of us of what closure is to you. Um, it definitely does include 
forgiveness. You know, it it definitely includes forgiveness, even even if it means forgiving someone who never asked, you know, who never apologized um, yeah. for what they did to you. Um, at the end of the day, it's about understanding what's it, it's your journey. Mm. You know, it's it's not their journey, and um, they saying staying angry is like drinking poison and, and expecting the next person to die. Mm. Mm. So I cannot continue. I mean, now I have a son and I, and I look at him and I think there's just no way I can continue holding on to this anger instead of being able to put all that energy in embracing the beautiful moments um, that are happening in my life. So, but I also feel like we live in a society that doesn't allow us to forget. How do you handle that? Because I can imagine with you where you're trying to move on, you're trying to rebuild. Yeah. And then if it's not us, the media reminding mm -hmm. you of what you've been through, Absolutely. it's social media, etc. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, society says, forgive, forget, and then you forget, then you forget, and you move on, and then they remind you. But I think it's just really embracing the beautiful parts of my life that, you know, are happening, like I said, and for me, it's, it's really just embracing what happened to me and understanding that it was part of the church. And I don't think that I would have become the woman that I am today and the mother that I am and going to be um, if, if it hadn't been for that incident, you know. Um, so I'm partly crazy enough. I'm grateful for that experience because it also reminded me of my worth and, 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 and mm. love and what love really is and just to not downgrade you know the kind of people that i accept into my life and keep that standard of saying uh -uh, abu, do you mm. i don't do yes. that i want to ask you with the four cc today mm. what is that perfect relationship what is that loving healthy space for you now what does it look like um somebody that is the cheerleader of your dreams and you are of theirs mm. and someone that allows you to be yourself and love yourself and allows you to be perfectly imperfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that for me is is really what defines a perfect relationship there is no perfect relationship mm. guys there is no perfect relationship um, but you know um, just find someone that loves you that mm. embraces you that reminds mm. you how beautiful mm. how amazing you are um, I remember when I was pregnant my Habi Dabi, <laughs> I would say, you're beautiful. Mm. You need to understand you're pregnant. Every woman goes through this. When I was bashing myself, I was like, oh, look at my word. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's finding someone that loves you even in moments that you don't feel like you're worth being loved. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think there are a lot of us who relate and I can imagine how many people are going through the most and I think a story like yours is yeah. a story that people need to hear. So thank you so much for thank coming so through. Thanks for the insight, Cece. Thank you. There we go. CC rebuilding and uh, it's beautiful to see. So coming up after the break, we have the dazzling, sensational TV and radio personality, Lerato Khanyaho, aka LK Jizzle. We're going to be talking about toxic relationships, so do stay tuned. Welcome back, you're still tuned in to Trending SA. Now, our next guest is my sister from another mother. In actual fact, I think I need to correct that. She is mother. Everybody calls her mother. <laughs> um, everybody that knows her and I will also know that we have a hell of a relationship together. We've done amazing radio shows. She's an incredible DJ and I've always played uh, after her because she opens for me at gigs. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Lerato Kanyako. Welcome to Trending SA. You were doing so well, mate. You were doing so well. And it all just went left. How are you, mother? I'm great, thank you. Good Thanks to have for you having on. You're looking so dashing. Much thank you. Thank huh? I had to. I mean, Guys, look, look at, at these metro from people talking together like we don't oh, exist. Oh, but I was going to say oh, thank you. Well, 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 you know, <laughs> alumni. But whatever. We have I a lot in common. <laughs> well, actually. Okay. All right. Then, What's okay. up, people? You look good. Thank you. It's so good to see you. You're looking nice fabulous too. as always. So are you. Love the hair. Love the hair. Let's yeah? do the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my play. Hi. Oh, my play. Ask you. Smoking. Uli Rato is one of those voices behind the popular Metro FM <laughs> talk show, Ask a Man. She ignored me. The show gives women an opportunity to ask men any question that they want and seek advice. And today, we have a quiet Uli Lato, as we'll say. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, no, we don't say that. Zulu people don't oh, say that. Okay, we do right. pronounce it properly. Uli Rato mm -hmm. is expertise as we dive into our pin chat. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. So, guys, toxic relationships are rampant out sure. here. And I guess the layered nature of them requires some, some kind of scrutiny. And that's exactly what we're going to do uh, today. From the overt red flag that's easy to spot to the subtle traits that make you wonder, right? Mm -hmm. Relationships do present us with so many things to consider. And uh, with the insights uh, that uh, CC has afforded us about ultimately surviving toxicity, I think it does beg the question, how do you know the signs? What are the red flags? Because they're different in so many scenarios. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to start with you, Lara. Yeah. You know, what do those tend to look like for you? You know, the thing about getting into a, a toxic relationship or finding yourself in a toxic relationship, a lot of times we don't know. Yes, there are people who know that they're getting into toxic relationships. But um, a lot of times you don't know because when you start dating someone, when you start dating Mo Flavor, I get it, we become other people. We don't show our real characters in the beginning because mm -hmm. you're trying to win a person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're unable mm -hmm. to pick up negative things, things that may perhaps in the future affect you emotionally or physically, that is. Mm -hmm. So um, it's hard, but the red flags are always there, man. I think after a month or two, anything that makes your vibe go... Uh uh, something is not right. Yeah. Mm. But because we are always hoping that people will change, or no, maybe I'm being a bit too much, or let me just overlook this. Mm. And we miss those red flags, deliberately mm. so. And sometimes, and it's, it's, it's also that, it's, it might be in the other person's behavior, but your own reaction to that behavior. Normally, Correct. you might have said, no, uh, no, Mable you don't talk like that about women or yeah. I don't appreciate that tone yes. because yeah. you know how you generalize about women mm. drivers mm. etc mm. but with this person you check yourself and you stay checking yourself yeah why are you scared why are you nervous to be yourself I think for me that tends to be a huge because one. it's also about people who come into your life to try and change who you are yeah and almost make it mm. seem like <laughs> being who you are is a problem for them and not even taking the moment to reflect on their own characters. Because let's face it, we all are struggling with something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And sometimes we bring that in, 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 in a very negative and toxic way. When I see people getting into new relationships, that's, I, I always inform my friends and I tell them, Guti, if somebody's coming into your life, they are coming to be an, an auxiliary part of your life. They yes. are coming to be part of your life. Yes. That's why you don't say you're, go you're going to be someone's life. Mm -hmm. And when you start ignoring your friends and moving away from friends and, and doing funny things and mm -hmm. now you're always with this person. Yeah. For me, I always say this is a recipe for disaster. They mm. should be a part of your life. I love that you say mm. that because mm. a lot of times, once again, when we, the reason why we stay in toxic relationships because mm -hmm. you don't know any better. Mm. Yeah. You don't know any better. You don't know any you better. You don't know what you deserve. Mm. Or maybe you know, but you think so. Your self-esteem is so low. So you need someone to validate you. You mm. need someone to complete you. You're unable to complete yourself. So there you go and get more flavor. Sorry, friends, you're going to be my job. <laughs> <laughs> He's used to it. He's used to it. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. save yeah. my play, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At backhand, I'm so scared. There's this new trend that's going on right now with the advent of, of social media mm. of airing mm. our dirty laundry. Mm. Sure. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, and, and the thing is, when we, when, when we, we when the Kabe, uh, Karabu, Karabu, I don't know, Kate, 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 my boy, uh, the story actually broke. Uh, we, we saw the different um, opinions that people and have reaction. about this mm. on Twitter. Mm. And then we saw Ule Buhang Dibanj Mokomo said that, so you guys are saying if I cheat on any woman, my impilo must my MPLO must fire yes. me. What's MPLO? Employer, employer, oh, employer. employer. Yeah. Mm. All right, okay. South Africans are petty, especially this one's bad Twitter. Mm. Love Katleho, and please, no employer must intervene with employees' private life, right? Then we've got another one. Then this one's coming to I am sad. Says, guys, cheating is never a mistake. He ruined lives, and in my opinion, he deserves to be hum uh, humiliated. Hashtag Katleho mm. Mabo. And then there's another one uh, from. Dash Libiza says that, was it necessary for her to film the whole thing? I mean, hmm. isn't that personal stuff? Uh, I'm very weird about this one because I know what happens to our mothers and our grandmothers because they were used to keep things in the family which where we don't talk about it because is it those aligned lead, mm. you know what I'm saying? So mm. now I feel that we should put it out there. I don't know. But is there value in that? I mean, is there yeah. value in taking all your problems 
problems that also involve you because it's very hard to work out who's who sometimes mm -hmm. in a situation like that. Sure. And you put it out there. Yeah. And some of these things are shameful and we all know how we as people can't handle shame. Yeah. And, and that kind of humiliation. I think it's destructive. I'm very two ways about it. Uh -huh. um, I think a lot of times when someone does something like that, it's probably out of desperation or really a cry for help. Mm -hmm. But also that's why a lot of times when they say when you're feeling angry and really emotional, put your phone down, yep. shut your mouth and really think about what you're about to mm. do next so that whatever you do whatever decision you make that is a very sober decision yes i've done that before yeah. and i regretted it because it yeah. just went left because the lines are often blurred mm. i have a few scenarios that i'm going to take you guys through mm -hmm. yeah i hope you're ready you let me know if you think this is actually a healthy relationship or a toxic one so okay. let's check out the first scenario because i'm going to london what You take care and you don't have those babies till I get back. I, uh, Rachel, you can't go. Ross loves Emily. Yeah, I know, I know, I know he does. But I have to tell him how I feel. He deserves to have all of the information and then he can... And I guess we've been we've been brainwashed by rom-coms, right? Yeah. That you can just string someone along and when you're finally ready, yeah. yes. don't get married, I Switch love you. Crap. Yeah. Is that okay? No. I don't know where this comes from, that where we think toxic. that people's lives have to revolve around ours, where we are the center of everybody's existence. <laughs> like, it's emotional where abuse, does that come that? from? It's that is, I was about to say, that is definitely emotional abuse. That's yeah. a sign of a very toxic person. Yeah. Because am I, I'm not rushing to you to come uh, to, to stop the wedding because I love you. It's because the second that I think of Mo getting married to someone else, it drives me insane. Mm, mm, because mm. when uh, you want to be married to someone because you don't want to see them with anyone else, not because you love them. How dare you not how be a but it's also, it, I just want to ruin no, everything. No, but it, it's also how people are attracted by a ring. Because a ring means, Guti, this thing is worth it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This thing is worth it. <laughs> like that. This is, yeah. You know, that's why married people are the most single people in the country. Yeah. Sure. But oh, no. <laughs> Fiery, fiery note. Uh, LKG stays with us and we continue the discussion about toxic relationships and perhaps even friendships. But uh, stay with us because after the break we get into all of that. It's the hashtag Tsa on 3. And welcome yeah. back. You're still watching Trending Essay on SABC3. Lerato Kanyaho is very much still with us. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking about toxic relationships, just setting up and establishing a few scenarios. And you guys were reacting to whether or not you thought those scenarios were toxic. And mm. I'm just going to bring in uh, reality TV star family, the Kardashians, specifically Kris Jenner. She's been accused on so many um, occasions of having a toxic relationship with her children, right? Mm -hmm. Either interfering or setting up their relationships so that at every point she can capitalize and you know, monetize whatever's happening in their lives. Um, and from you know, her very, I guess, very casual relationship to how, things like how Kim went on birth control at a very, very early age. And people are like, how, Sway? You know, but there are all sorts of dynamics. What do you think about that Kardashian-Jenner family dynamic? I think people should stop commenting on parental relationships just because they don't mirror what they had or what they have. Sure. Um, I remember, oh, oh, I'm about to fire away. <laughs> okay. I remember growing up because my mother had a very open communication relationship with me. Mm. My mother and I used to discuss things. She didn't, she wasn't a dictator in my life. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have some family members go, you, we am spoiler, nan, 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 yeah. nan. And that turned out very well. So, I mean, oh, Lerato, yeah. was it a problem that Chris, that sex tape with Ray J came out? And Chris was like, no, man, we can turn this thing into something. Yeah. Don't worry, Kim. We got this. But no, is, is that the truth? Or is it, listen, we do not bash the Kardashians on this table when I'm here. <laughs> let's just stop there. All right, so let's just stop. <laughs> sure. I, I'm here going to be defending them. But was that the truth, though? Mm. Even today, we don't know if that was the truth. Mm. Sure. But for me, Chris Jenner does what any other parent would do. It would be mm. toxic if these children of hers, all five, six of them, five, five, ne? Um, disagreed with every single thing that she suggested on the table. Mm -hmm. But they go with it. So I don't think that's toxic. Sure. She's taking care of family. End of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And she rides for them no matter what. And she rides for them mm. no matter what. And that's how I would be with my children. Can we talk about 
Uh, ourselves, yeah. our toxic traits yes. that we actually want to, want to change. I'll start. And, the, and they were working mm -hmm. on I'll that. I'll start. Well, yeah. I, I've got this thing where I care a lot. And when I care a lot, I get to a point, okay, one, get theta. So I will, I will shout and I will be brash. Mm. But it's coming from oh, the... That's easy to believe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will, <laughs> I will shout and I'll be brash. And then uh, when a friend is asking for advice, like a friend will come through, and it's a shy life. It's a shy life. You know? And, Let me and, tell and you the, what your problem <laughs> is, Wena. <when, like, laughs> and like the thing is, they're coming to me, Shane, because they know they, they want that, you sure. know? But sometimes, um, as I'm getting more sensitive, I'm thinking... Maybe just be more kind and gentler, yes. you know? But, Cushion but, this thing. But, Cushion yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn that. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I've, I've been through quite a few traits that I've, uh, I'd like to think I've gotten over. I mean, being passive-aggressive is one of them. Mm. Oh, <laughs> being passive-aggressive well. is so much fun. You're never completely over it. And I'll say that because I, that's I, I, I what believe I you are no professional well. in this space. <laughs> but I believe I'm over it. I believe I've Friends. worked through it. Mm -hmm. Lerato, you are not going to say anything to ruin my name. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, I've I support to get you. here. <laughs> You're never going to get over there. And it's you, so Lerato, much fun. It's with <laughs> me, um, I don't always air out my problems. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's horrible. I, I, I'm very horrible when it comes to that. I don't always want to address matters. I'm always like, well, we are all grown. Do you know what I mean? You should have known that you doing this thing is actually wrong. But I don't know. You know what I mean? Okay. I feel you. Yeah. It's not quite, it's not quite, but... Mm sort of on the same continuum is stonewalling people. Yes. <gasps> Impassive. You don't know what's going on with this person because right now I don't feel you and I will tell you what went wrong when I'm in the mood. Yes. What an awful I actually, habit. Yeah. You're not what an just like awful like, terrible habit. Rufilo, yes. I actually Ooh. don't like because I'm a passionate person. Mina, yeah. I am let's talk. If we need to scream my and blend, point a camera I at each other at 3 o'clock so in the morning, yeah. let's do it. And then I'll when put you, on my gown and yeah. let's go. Mm. And then when you realize what a problem that is, and can yes. you imagine being in a relationship with someone who does that? And, yeah, it's always, no. and the thing is about all of these things, guys, is they're all survival mechanisms. Mm. These are the things that helped you deal with problems when you were younger, mm. you were less mm. capable. But then you get to this big old age, you can't do this anymore. No, you, you need can't. to check it out. Mm. And yeah. in the end, we are a work in progress. We are. No, most of the time we are. A passive aggressive <laughs> work in progress. A stone warning well. work in <laughs> progress. <laughs> a nala ring work in progress. <laughs> this is why, people of SAPC3, I'm on the show to provide balance. <laughs> But wow. Wow. Wait now, wait now. <laughs> so proclaimed. But I've been absolutely awesome. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We have to get you back soon. This was like therapy for me. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, trust me, it was therapy for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks much for better in this moment. Yeah. Well, um, that is the end of the show. Um, a great session once again, and thank you very much for tuning in. Listen, make sure you watch tomorrow because we've got some fabulous people. One of my faves, Mansu Pad, joins us on the round table, oh, and nice we'll also. Witness. Be chatting to a uh, football legend, former Banyana Banyana superstar Porsche Mudise. It's going to be another good one. Nice. Goodbye. Goodbye.